Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Understanding and Classifying Triangles. I'm really excited to teach this because actually, you know, people look at triangles and think, oh, what's the big deal? It's just a three-sided shape. It's a triangle, right? But actually, triangles are used like so much in math. I can't even describe to you how often triangles are used. I can't get too far ahead of the discussion, but just trust me that even when you get into college and beyond, uh, you're dealing with triangles constantly. There's an entire field of math called trigonometry where we just learn about triangles. So uh, it's very, very important. In this lesson, we're going to classify and understand what a triangle is. First of all, a triangle, there's two things I want you to understand about all triangles, and here they are. A triangle is a three-sided shape. That's a closed figure, right? So you can have tall, skinny triangles. You could have short, fat triangles and so on, but they all have three sides that form a closed shape. The next important fact about a triangle, I want you to remember this until the end of time. The angles that are inside the triangle in all of the corners, if you measure those angles, for triangles, they always add up to 180 degrees. I'll say it again, inside of a triangle, all three angles add up to 180 degrees, always, for every triangle, no matter if it's a tall, skinny triangle, a short, fat triangle, lots of different, different triangles we're gonna learn about, Third time I'll say it, all of those inside angles add up to 180 degrees. It is a fact of all triangles, and I want you to remember it because you're going to use it for like the next 20 years of your life. Trust me, when you go far enough in math, we'll, we'll use that fact constantly over and over. All right, so let's talk about some different kinds of triangles. The triangle that's the easiest to understand is called an equilateral triangle. Equilateral just means that all sides are equal. That's basically what it, what it means. All sides are equal and all angles on the inside are equal. Now these little marks that are drawn through the sides, you see there's a mark here, a mark here, and a mark here. Those mean that the sides with the markings on them are all congruent. When we're drawing shapes in geometry, we don't say things are really equal. We say that they're congruent. That means essentially they're the same length right? Uh, in other words, this line is in a different direction than this line, so they're not the same line segment, but they do have the same length, so we call them congruent. All three sides are congruent, that's what the markings mean, and all of these angles are also the same. Now let me ask you a question. I just told you there's 180 degrees in every triangle, so if you know that all three of these must be equal, and you know that every triangle, this one included, has 180 degrees when you add them all up, what is the measure of each of these angles? Well, the measure of each, each of these angles is 60 degrees. LMN is LMN, this angle. This angle is MNL, this one here, and then this one here. All, all this is saying in green is that every one of these angles are equal to 60 degrees. Why? Because six times three is 18. So 60 times three must be 180. So if you take 180, you divide it by three, you get an angle of 60 degrees right there. All right, equilateral triangle, very important. Now we have another kind of triangle called an isosceles triangle. An isosceles means that you have this side and this side are congruent, means the same length, but the base here, or the third side of the triangle, no matter if it's the base or not, the other side of the triangle is not the same length as the other two. So equilateral has all three equal. Isosceles just means two sides are equal or congruent. And because of that, two angles inside of the triangle are equal. What two angles do you think are equal in this triangle? This angle is going to be the same as this one just because of symmetry. You can see they look to be about the same. This angle is much, much bigger than this one, so it is different. So an isosceles triangle means you have two sides that are the same length and also two angles that are the same on the inside. But I guarantee you, no matter what these angles are, if you add them up, this plus this plus this, it will always equal 180 degrees. It's always true of every single triangle, okay? And that's what this is saying. These two sides are equal and these two angles are equal. So we have an equilateral and an isosceles triangle. Let's talk about the third kind of triangle called a scalene triangle. It means all sides are different lengths and all angles are also different measures as well. So we don't have anything equal in, an, in a scalene triangle. Now we have one mark here two marks here and three marks there. And what that actually means is that this is a different length than this one, which is also a different length than this one. That's what these little marks mean. And because of that, this angle, you could just see it looks different than this one, which looks different than that one as well. 
But again, I guarantee you that if I knew what this angle was, and I knew what this one was, and I knew what this one was, if I add them all up, you're always going to get 180 degrees. Even though all these triangles look different, if you add all the angles up inside, they always equal 180 degrees. I keep saying it because it's something you're going to use forever in physics, in way advanced, in calculus, all kinds of things. We use these facts of triangles. So, when we're talking about how to classify triangles on their sides, we have equilateral triangle, all sides equal, all angles equal. We have isosceles triangle, two sides are equal, two angles are equal. And we have the scalene, which means nothing is equal. No sides, no angles, they're all different. Now, if we want to talk about how to classify these in terms of their angles, we have other names as well. Okay, we, the other names were all about the sides of the triangle, mostly. Here, let's talk about the angles. We have what we call an acute triangle if all of the angles on the inside are acute, which means acute, an acute angle, remember, means less than 90 degrees. So if you think of a 90 degree angle being straight up and down like this, then this angle is acute because it's less than 90. This angle is acute because it's less than 90. This angle is also acute because it's less than 90. If all angles are less than 90, we call it an acute triangle, right? We call it an acute triangle. All three angles less than 90, all three angles are acute. Now here we have another kind of triangle called a right triangle. It has one right angle. This little symbol in the corner means what? 90 degrees. We've used that symbol before. Uh, right triangle, I can't even tell you how important it is. I'm being very serious when I say we have an entire course called trigonometry that is basically learning how to use right triangles, mostly all triangles really, but right triangles especially are incredibly important. I can't tell you exactly how important right now, but just trust me, you're never going to stop learning about right triangles. They're very, very important. A right triangle is just a triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees. And then we have the obtuse triangle, which means one of the angles is bigger than 90 degrees. So you can think of the obtuse triangle as the laid back triangle because you have one angle here. A 90 degree angle would be right up and down here, but this one's bigger than that, which means it's an obtuse angle in here, which means it's kind of a laid back triangle. So one more time for the top in terms of their angles. We have acute triangles when all of the angles are less than 90 degrees. We have right triangles when we have one 90 degree angle in there. And we have obtuse triangles when we have uh, one of the angles greater than 90 degrees, the laid back triangle. Now you can also have, you know, acute isosceles triangles and so on. We can put the names together. So what I need to do now is start putting our problems on the board. We'll get a little practice classifying triangles. All right, problem number one, we have a triangle here and we want to ask ourselves what type of triangle is it? And we want to use as many descriptors as possible. We want to use the classifying by the sides and also classifying by the angles. So what do we have? We know that this side is the same length as this side, that's what the mark is, but this side is a different length than that, right? So because we have two equal sides, then we know that it is going to be an isosceles triangle, which is down here. We know it cannot be equilateral because equilateral would have all three sides be the same. But we don't have all three sides. We actually only have two sides, so we know it's going to be an isosceles triangle. But we also know that this is an acute angle, and this is an acute angle, and this is an acute angle. And remember, a triangle that is an acute triangle has all angles less than 90 degrees. All of these angles are less than 90 degrees. So what do we call this thing? We call it acute, we call it acute isosceles. Isosceles. So we could just call it an isosceles triangle. We could just call it an acute triangle, but we put them both together because both of them apply. It's an acute isosceles triangle. Next question, name all of these angles here. We're just getting practice with naming angles. So we're gonna name them. Here, and so we have the angles listed as uh, X, Y, Z. That's this angle, X, Y, Z, right? And then we have the angle Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X. That's this angle right here. And then we have the angle Z, X, Y. Z, X, Y, that's this angle. So the first one goes with this one, this one goes with this one, and this one goes with this one. Notice the middle part is the vertex of each of the angles, the pointy part of each of the angles. All right, problem number two, we have this triangle, and we want to first write down the type of this triangle. Well, we see immediately that we have a right angle here. And if we have one right angle, we learned a minute ago, that means this is a right triangle. 
but we also know that this side is the same length as this one, but this side is different, so it's only two of the sides that are equal. So because two of the sides are equal, that's called isosceles, remember? And because it has a right angle, that's called a right triangle. So we're going to call this an isosceles right triangle, or you could call it a right isosceles. You could call it a right isosceles triangle. All right, for the next part of the problem, let's find the measure of angle EGF. EGF, that's this angle right here. The symbol tells me that that is a 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle. All right, here's problem number three. We have a triangle. What type of triangle is this? Let's take a look. Well, first of all, we see it's a laid back triangle. This angle, if it were straight up and down, would be 90 degrees, but it's larger than that. So because it is one of these angles is larger than 90 degrees, this is an obtuse triangle, right? Obtuse. So we know it's an obtuse triangle, and it's also a, what kind? Scalene triangle. Why is that? Because uh, we have three different lengths, right? So remember, a scalene is when all of the three lengths are totally different. So it's an obtuse triangle. It's also a scalene triangle. So we put those guys together. We call it obtuse scalene. All right, obtuse scalene triangle. All right, question, which angle is greater than 90 degrees? We just said it was this one, so we're gonna name it angle A, B, C. Angle A, B, C. And that's the final answer. All right, here's problem number four. What kind of triangle is this? Well, this side is the same length as this side, also the same length as that. So we know it's an equilateral triangle. We also know these, all three of these angles are acute angles. So if we want to be totally correct, we will call it acute equilateral. Equilateral. Let me just double check the spelling on equilateral. That's right. Okay. Acute equilateral. All right. Next qu uh, question. What is the measure of angle HJI? HJI. That's this angle measure right there. And you might say, well, we never, we never told that. Uh, well, actually, we were told that uh, in the beginning, but we also figured it out ourselves because we know all triangles have to have 180 degrees. And since this is equilateral, all three of these are equal. So if you take 180 and you divide it by 3, think of 18 divided by 3. That's 6. So 180 divided by 3 is 60. And we actually said that here, that all of these angles for an equilateral were equal to 60 degrees. So we know this angle is equal to 60 degrees as well. Just like this one, this is 60 and this one's also 60 as well. All right, problem number five. What type of triangle do we have here? This is different than this, which is different than this. That means it's a scalene triangle. Also, this is an acute angle, this is an acute angle, this is an acute angle, it's an acute triangle. So together they're called acute scalene. Acute scalene triangle. Question, name all of the sides of this triangle, all of the line segments that make the side. So we could call this LM, that would be this side here. And we could call it MN, which would be this side right here. And then we could call it NL, which is this side right here. Just getting a little practice with writing the names of line segments. All right, problem six, what kind of triangle do we have here? Well, we see right away, this is an acute angle, this is an acute angle, but this one, this would be a right angle, it's larger than that, this is an obtuse angle. So because of that, it's obtuse triangle. So we'll put obtuse, right? But we can also realize that this is a uh, isosceles triangle because these two sides are equal, but the third one is different. Remember, isosceles means you have two equal sides. So it's an obtuse isosceles triangle. Obtuse isosceles triangle. Question, name the angles that measure less than 90 degrees. Well, we just said this one's bigger than 90, and this one's way less than 90, and this one's way less than 90. So it's these two angles. So let's name them. How can we name them? RSQ would be this one, RSQ. And then this one over here is RQS, RQS, RQS is this one, uh, RSQ is this one. So in this lesson, we have learned how to classify triangles, and I mean it when I say triangles are used so much in math, in real life too.
And so we're learning how to classify triangles based on their size, I'm sorry, their sides, which would be, uh, you know, if it's an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle or a scalene triangle. And we also can classify uh, triangles based on their angle. Is it an acute uh, triangle where all the sides are less than 90? Is it an obtuse triangle where one of the angles is larger than 90? Or is it that really special triangle, the right triangle that has a 90 degree angle? The right triangle, especially important, is going to be used throughout math. You'll learn so much about that as we go farther. So I'd like you to rewind this, make sure you can get all of these correct, make sure you understand all of the differences that we talked about here. Follow me on to part two, we'll get a little more practice.